Hey, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. I love jumping on here and seeing exos in the chat before we even get online. That is amazing. So I want to thank all of you that are already here, already, already ready for tonight's conversation. Thank you so much for Joyce for putting that exo in the chat. Um, tonight, um, we have a special uh, guest from a past season of Ready to Love that's going to be joining us. So make sure that you go ahead and share this. Let people know. Go ahead and tap some people that you know. Tap them and let them know that we have a special Ready to Love alumni uh, guest that's going to be joining us later on tonight. Um, and first, you know, let me go ahead and bring my co-host into the building. Scorpio Mo, what's good? Yes, yes, yes. How are you? I'm good. You guys know I am here in Orlando. Um, I'm back at Disney. Okay. I try to stay at Disney as often as possible. But no, they're doing the Disney Dreamers Academy. And so I came in, uh, my daughter and I came out to Disney. But you guys know nothing is going to keep me away from having this conversation about this wrap up of uh, Ready to Love. There was a lot that we didn't get a chance to really talk about from that finale. Right. We talked about some things, um, but there was hold a up, lot. Hold more. up. Hold up. OK. OK. I got something for you. Okay. Um, just a token of uh, you know, allowing me on the show and you know our friendship and stuff. Just wanted to give this to you in front of everyone. And hold up, hold up. Make you know sure what? I petrified one out the way. <laughs> but I just want to <laughs> give you your flowers. I'm still tripping off that. I'm still tripping the off that. The petrified rose. Oh, the petrified so rose. Now, I, yeah, you you did you, you know you came with the shenanigans, but the petrified rose that was crazy. And actually, a lot of people had a lot to say about that scene. A lot of people had a lot to say about that scene. Um, what do you think Chaz was trying to do with that scene? He had a backup plan. That's what he was trying to do. <laughs> well, you you believe that he really, really was going to say yes. Damn right. And then when she didn't, he took out the the the, the petrified <laughs> rose to try to to try to to save face. He had a backup plan. He plays chess. He's a move ahead or two moves ahead. Yeah. But where it backfired was old. Uh, I shouldn't say old girl. Patrice. Patrice. Right. Yeah, that was the plan. Ah, see, I don't know. So you think, okay, but we don't know when he, the only reason I, I don't know if that's true or not is because he said yes to Patrice, but do we know if Patrice, he saw Patrice first or after Vanessa? I don't know. I don't know. So I'm saying if he, what if he, what if his date with, what if the conversation with Patrice was first? I feel like he picked Patrice to get back at Vanessa. I feel like something happened between Chaz and Vanessa that we don't know. That's possible, but I believe he just would have pivoted. And then if she would have found the petrified flower, he would have been like, what is this? How did this get in there? I don't know what this is. That's what I wanted to do. I'm telling you. Never heard of a petrified rose. That was, I could see it if he said like, a you know, wilted but, rose because my love for you has wilted. But to say it was petrified, that was strange. Yeah, do you buy that? Or how does do, do you buy that at the flower store? How does that work? I, I think he was trying to be over the top. I feel like he was trying to be over the top. Um, I'm going to read you guys something. I have uh, shouts out to Ice Cream Combos. Um, a friend of mine uh, runs that page. Uh, or runs that that site, that platform. And um, there was a post that went up this week that basically said that Chaz, that scene was the worst in Ready to Love history. It was the, it was literally, it says, Chaz may be the corniest man in Ready to Love history. Um, shouts out again to Ice Cream Combos. Yeah. Chaz may be the corniest man in Ready to Love history. Let me tell you something. Sunny's 
He don't care about none of that. He don't care about nothing. You don't think he cares about stuff like that? <laughs> now, actually, he does. It's ego. It, he does. He does. Low key, I'm messing with you, but it's it's ego. That, yeah. that's the reason I'm having the backup plan. It's all ego. When when Justin came in, you saw the ego. You saw. Mm -hmm. like, you see, what I'm saying like he. You could see the window of his um. I, I, I don't want to say insecurity, but he had a problem or he, he felt funny. He felt the way he wanted to be the man in position, just like when they were at the pajama party. He got down on one knee. He was like, who's the sexiest of them all? For a man to even say something like that, like that's crazy. Yeah. That's, for, you, that's for people to decide, but for you to ask that, you know, and then in front of someone, you know, in front of her, and then what was she supposed to say? And then yeah. that's when he first introduced Chazzy. He was like, yeah, it's Chazzy, baby. I thought you caught that. I, was like, I oh. did not. I did not catch that. Um, hey, Colton, uh, Marriott, thank you so much. Tell your husband I said thank you. And please let me know what you think of the book. Please, please, please uh, let me know your thoughts about the book. Um, Marriott said that her husband gifted her the book for her birthday. That's very sweet. Um Yes, that book right there. And and I'm so excited, you guys. I have another book that's coming out in May, but we'll talk about all that. We're just tonight, we're just we just are trying to work through some of the things that we've seen this season on Ready to Love. Now, before we before we continue on with tonight, like I said, please let people know. Go ahead and let people know that we have a special guest that's joining us um later on. We need to make sure we get our likes up, and we're gonna go ahead and bring a very special ready to love alumni guest in the building tonight but before we move on with this ridiculousness that has happened in fort worth i want to share this and let's 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 talk about this so uh ready to love is really going to philly oh. ages successful singles age 30 to 50 in philadelphia um that if you want to be a part of it, that is the QR code there, or I'll put this in the chat, lighthearted.com backslash show backslash ready to love. If you want to, you know, shoot your shot. That, <laughs> that is going to be interesting. <sighs> um, I am actually glad that we're not doing any more Southern states right now. I think that we needed some fresh. I think Dallas and Fort Worth, it 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 I, it it was not. Um, it just to me it was real petty and silly, and um, I really was expecting more out of both seasons. But I think I'm. I think Philly is going to give us some different energy than we have ever, <laughs> ever. Somebody said no. Oh no, for EXO, my bad. I can't see, but. Yeah. Yeah, Philly is um this should be interesting. Yeah, yeah. And that that is I do think, and I agree with Monica. Monica says, I wish it was just a 10-year age range. 20 years is a lot. And I think that's part of the problem that we've seen it, that we've seen on this show. Going from 30 to 50, it so you have a 31-year-old man, and then you have a 40, 42-year-old woman. It's it's not it's not going to work. What's up, C-Dub? C-Dub is in the building. That is what's up. It's great to see him Aren't in you? the chat tonight. Um, I saw Nassau Bahamas was in. You guys let us know where you are watching from. Um, and make sure that you like this so that we have when we have our guests come in. Um, trust me, you guys, this is going to be a great conversation. I want to hear their perspective on some of the things that we've seen happen this season. Um, and they have some great news to share. So I'm excited um, about our guest that's going to be joining us in just a bit. But Philly is going to be the next place. Um, I'm wondering if we're going to have another season of Ready to Love Make a Move. Probably. Um, yeah. So when do they shoot? Like in the summer, right? It well, they, they, they've they been shooting two a year, you know? So um, one like at the top of the year and then one again like in the um, – in, in the summertime okay. and so they've already stacked them and then also what they've been doing is shooting in one location twice so it may be like philly and then baltimore you know what i mean or then you know like it was miami 
And then um, there was an, uh, I forget where the other, it was two in, in Florida, obviously two in Texas um, with Dallas and Fort Worth. Atlanta just had two seasons. Um, there was, there was the DFW area had two. So it was DC. And then um, I don't know if it was Potomac or what, I can't remember where the other area was in DC, but it was kind of right. You know, they just kind of are doing them in the same area. And I think you get a different energy with every season, right? With, with every city, you get a different type of culture. I don't really know. What do you think we learned about Texas with, with, with Fort Worth? Um, let me say there's some beautiful women in Texas. I, let me say that. And I think, um, the guys seem to be, I don't know. I'm like I said, I'm still new to a lot of this, so but I would assume that the people are familiar with the show, but they claim they're not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, they the reason they're not, I think, and we talked about this earlier. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, that also writes about shows, is that they are recruiting people, as we heard Dom share with us, people are being recruited on dating sites, people are being recruited that don't watch reality TV. And so I think this show would work better with people that really want it to be on television. I was talking to a friend of mine, like I said, that writes for reality TV. And she said that she was actually um, recruited for the first season of Atlanta, Ready to Love. And the reason that she didn't want to do it is because the way that they presented it, it was very different than the actual show. And then they weren't being honest with the guys about what it really was. Like they, you know. The flim flam, like they the bait and switch. If, if to me the only way you really going to get the real reaction remember the show on HBO Taxi Cabs Confessions yes you would have to do something along those lines you know what yeah. I mean yeah then find out they record you know they're being recorded and signed a release form or whatever the case I don't know how yeah. you get that long term but you got to figure out a way to where they're not because the jig is up now everybody knows what you know, you can get a spinoff, you can do this, you know, they play so many different plays with it. So, yeah. I do want to say this, though. Has anyone actually gotten a spinoff? Like, people keep trying to get a spinoff, but has anyone actually gotten a spinoff? Like, I don't know. Just of to have the spinoff. That's the thing. So, the Ready to Love Make a Move was not necessary. It was a it was a spinoff of Ready to Love, but for one person, I don't think that any one couple would be enough to get a spinoff locked in. I think if, if you made a big enough impact and that people saw the love, like the reality shows they used to do with Jessica Simpson and the boy, the, the young, the you know, Nick, whatever his name, Lachey. Lachey yeah. You, if you make it interesting enough, and I think that's what they're gunning for. We're trying to get this together. Even if they have to fake it through, they're willing to do it. Yeah, that's obviously true. Uh, yes, Joy and Cliff did make it to another reality show. But the thing about Joy and Clifton is that they already had ties in, um, in D.C. And that is another show. It's not Ready to Love. It actually is an entirely different production company. That's Kingdom Reign which is uh, under the helm of Carlos King, which is very different than Will Packer production. So they did, you know, but they were able to get on another show. And I guess that is the considered what everybody is wanting to do. But the reality is, um, well, I will say this, Brent from season two in Atlanta did the one which aired on TV one. So that was, I guess, it was himself and another young lady. She had not been on Ready to Love. Again, these are different production companies. Right. But I guess that's the closest thing to a spinoff. But some of these people want to be actors, actresses. You see what I'm saying? So this yeah. is their time in the light. And I guess yeah. they, you know, figure it out from there. Most of them, they, that's I think what most people want. They want to figure out a way to break into Hollywood in some way. Um, or they you know, want to use this to catapult their business. So, you know, if I sell, I don't know, makeup, then I want to be able to use this to make my makeup brand soar, which is, which is not, you know, which is smart. It just doesn't always work that way. Um, 
But yeah, I think a major problem is the age difference. I don't, I think that's a huge issue. Um, I'm going to play this clip from the reunion, which is airing on Friday. <laughs> and I, I think this clip speaks to the age difference. Um, and I want us all to just, you know, have a conversation about it. But I think this is kind of some of the things that we see to happen when we have a 20 year age gap, um, because so much happens in 20 years from 30 to 50 is a very different. Those are two very different, sometimes three very different dynamics. Okay. So let's 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 watch this together. Family, EXO family. And then let's let's get into it. Me. You don't know anything about, you me, anything about so, okay, me. We had one conversation. Well, we had one hard. conversation because he got mad because we called him thirsty because he was. I wasn't thirsty. That's what happened. What would I be thirsty over uh, a girl that got two? I ain't even going to get into it. I ain't going to say what I want to say. Please say it. You're not my type. Scammer, please. I'm a scammer? You a scammer. I'm a scammer. Bitch. What you is? You a baby mama with your tools tied. What? Oh. This is so nasty. This is how oh, I want to go out there. It looks terrible. You unattractive. You bad built. That's you a cool. little man. You got a BBL. Your body not real. All right. That chain not real. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Me, me. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> he, 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 I, I guess the low blow thing comes when you can't find nothing else. And he went just, come on, bro. Come on. That's crazy. Um, who do you think was at fault in that clip? He was, he was like, you he said he wasn't going to say nothing, and then he, I don't know if that was it, but that was worse, or that was just as bad as anything he could have said. Yeah. Like, what, like, like, you scraping the ground, son. Like, come on, man. Do you feel like anything that she said, that she responded was? No, she said the typical woman, she played on this height. She played on this fake chain. <laughs> She did the, you know, the, it, a man would play on the things that he just did. She said to him, so now, nah. I mean, he he definitely ain't going to get no women after this. <laughs> you don't did that. Come on, bro. You bugging. Well, um, I'm fine being the voice, uh, being the one that people are going to disagree with. <laughs> um, I think they both are wrong. I think they both are wrong. Um I think that as women, we can you cannot expect to, to make fun of the way a man looks, go for those things that you know are you 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 thirsty, you bad built, you little, you know, and then expect him not to respond. Um, I think that both of them were acting out and it was ugly. I think that we have to realize that if somebody says something about you, your instinct is to say something back. And so he didn't say something at first, but she kept, she called him a scam. She just, she kept insulting him and then he insulted her. Um, I think that, I think both of those, I think they both believe that, right? I think that she believes that he's, doesn't have enough money for someone like her and he's, you know, unattractive. She's probably not attracted to him. And I also think that there are some men that do not want to be with a woman who, does not want children and already has children and it's not with her children's father. Right. Um, go ahead. I don't know that. That just seems like, um, like it's one, he could have combated and said her, her looks, but to me, he, he just went to the basement. You could have stayed on her floor and y'all just did jab for jab, but he just went, I don't know. It's like saying a woman, I don't even want to even say that. I don't know. I just think he went to the basement. It was like, dang, dog. You know, you on TV. Like, because she had, because he said, you, you, which part was the basement? The uh, the baby situation. The um. So the, do you think that, do you, do you, like your son, right? Yeah. You have a son. Yeah. Do you want your son to be with a woman that has multiple children by, well, two children by a, a man that's not, by does do, do you want Christopher to raise someone else's children? I mean, I wouldn't think that'd be the best choice for him, but if he's in love, like, you know, I mean, I can only want for him 
you know, the best. And if, you know, it's kind of tough. You know, he's his own man right now. My son is 25 years old. And then I wouldn't, like, push that on him or want him to be, you know what I mean? But what could I do? I, I couldn't want it. But to sit there and tell somebody, what do you say? That's why your tubes are tied? No, he said you are a baby mama with your tubes tied. That's why you're a baby. You're a baby. Mama. He was like, you're not. She, he said, you're not my type. And then he said, you're a baby mama with your tubes tied. Where's the. OK, so. Like, I don't know. I don't know. What's that got to do with him, though? You see what I'm saying? Like, what does that got to do with you? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, that, that The joke didn't fit to me. If, if you were joking, it just didn't. I didn't get it. Maybe I was over my head. It's like saying, oh, that's why you had an abortion. You know, like, what is so, like, what did that come from? I just, I guess, I, I guess my concern, I'm not saying that he wasn't wrong, but I also feel like there are men that say they don't want to be with a woman that, that does not, that this, this comes up every season. Right, right, right. A woman that is not able to have more children, that, that is a problem for a man that is like at that age, it doesn't have his own children. Right. Uh -huh. But I don't, I guess what I'm not understanding is why did, why are you not upset with her going at him? Like if she would have said something like, that's why you're impotent or some like that, that may be, you know what I'm saying? Maybe something or you can't have, look, Maybe something along those lines, then I get that. But this her to me, her stuff was surface. You know, the regular snap nope, scammer, fake chain. That that's surface stuff to me. That's surface snapping back and forth. He dug. Like to me, that was it's one thing to the to, to crack a joke or to say something, but to take a dig like that and you saying kids and you can't, I don't know. That just uh, I don't know. I think they both were wrong. I just think they both were wrong. I, I don't think you can. I don't think you can insult someone and expect them not to insult you back. No, no, I, I get that part. You can't determine someone else's what they're going to say back. But it's still the. But so, so when we do that, and then let's say he would have said the b word, everybody would have said he was wrong. Then people are still saying he was wrong. People say men are wrong <laughs> if they respond. Right? No, no. That that's a. It's, that's why I refuse to duel on, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, either way, even if you're right, you're going to be wrong. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. the, that doesn't make, but that's what I'm saying. Like, we're supposed to be able to say on this channel, we can say we really think. I think they both are wrong. I think they both are wrong. I think if I, if I look at you and be like, you ain't blah, 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 you bald headed, blah, 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 blah. And then you come back at me and be like, well, you, you wear, we, we, you know, we've wearing, blah, blah. like that is, it, it, I cannot expect to insult you when you not come back. But you don't think that's all surface stuff? No, I don't think it's surface. I don't think it's surface when you call it, when you insult a man as a scammer and say he don't have any money. I don't think that's surface. I think that that speaks to him being a, an attractive candidate. Nobody's going to want you. But you got you ain't got no that's not I don't think that surface and I also don't think that her saying and him saying that she I think to a lot of men that situation is not attractive but I think men are afraid to say it. Um okay so let's say I mean I don't know if that's a real thing with her right? What and do you mean? The reason why he's saying it because it's real he thinks he's going to hurt her but we should, if, if she's calling him a scammer, that doesn't mean that it's true. You see what I'm saying? Well, if he, it, 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 but if he had intel or information that that was really true and he's trying to use that against her, is that not past the joke at that point? I don't think so. I think, I don't think you can insult somebody and expect them to play nice. No, I, I so it's like, I'm gonna call you. You ain't this. You were thirsty. You wanted us, and then nobody wants you back because you. We called him thirsty because he was like, I cannot expect to talk to you like that, and you not respond. And then the fact that women were all back there, like he looks ridiculous. He's disgusting. Well, it's, it's, I'm like, okay, but everybody just shut up. How about that? How about everybody be quiet, right. insulting each other? And if you're not going to be quiet, insulting each other, then you got to know. It's you got to know that it's going to come back. If I call you a name. I cannot expect you not to call me one back. A name, but you know, I, I don't think tubes being tied is a is a deep dark seat. Like that's I don't think that's a horrible thing. I, I don't 
If, I don't know if they are or not. I mean, that's weird. I don't know. Maybe he, I don't know. But I'm I don't a, think that's a horrible insult. I'm assuming that's a real thing. That's why you said it. Yeah, I am. But, but I also but, don't think that, I think that what he said was worse. What she said was worse. You think what she said was worse? I do. Nah. She did. What the, what the, because anything she said was, if he said oh, more, it was more, it was going off the top, right? He said, he said, he couldn't find nothing. And then he, he went for some truthful stuff that he thought was going to make her look bad. No, I think he was saying, that's why I don't like you. I didn't, I wasn't, he said, I wasn't thirsty. Why would I be thirsty for you? You got two kids and a, and a, and a, and your tubes tied. That's it's what he said. Tubes tied thing. I just kind of just felt, uh, did you have to come on? You don't like her because of kids, but you saying that, like, so you can't, I, I don't think it is not liking someone because of their kids. I think you could say like, okay, I, I was, I, I remember I went on a date with a guy yeah. and he told me that he had three small children, right? Three, right? like five, all under the age of five. Right. And I was like, <laughs> I'm my kids were teenagers at that time. And I was like, he was like, I'm going to come. I wanted to stop by. I wanted to introduce you to my kids. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, no, no, don't bring them. <laughs> Don't bring him over here because I am not, I am not, I was not looking to date someone that had small children. I don't think that's a, a bad thing. I think I have the right to say that. No, no, that, I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, I think I think if a man says I don't want to be with a woman that has children already and can't have any more because I can't have any with her, I don't think that's necessarily like a bad thing. But I think the way he did it, he was trying to prove that he wasn't into her. And he probably was into her. She's a very beautiful woman. I just, my point is this. They both were too wrong. Were wrong. I don't, and I don't think you can call somebody a scammer, say nobody wanted them. They was, they were, they were uh, thirsty. They, they don't have no money. They got a fake chain and expect them to just be like, okay, well, since you're a woman, I'm not going to respond. That's just not realistic. No, but but, but y'all use that on other stuff though. If now if he said the B word, then what? He then did say that she had a she her. he said that she had a BBL because he was like he said she she said the chain is fake and he was like the body is fake. Right. Was, just, to he, me, it just showed they both were being really hateful to each other and it looked really bad on television. Now I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of ready to love fans that love that kind of stuff. They love seeing people go back and forth, they love seeing black men insult black women and black women insult black men, but I just don't like seeing it. And I wish both of them had refrained because first of all, if you guys are not connected and don't want to be together, why are you mad anyway? Exactly. I think just embarrassment when somebody makes a statement and then they want to, and you know, because you know, the room and people side out like, oh, and then you feel the pressure to say something. You don't want to look bad. And then it just turns into something ugly. I don't like seeing it. Oh, um, Gumball said, Mo said, what if he called her to be work? Well, Mo was saying that Thank you. he wasn't that wrong because, and he just, he, because he mentioned the tubes tied, that was taking it low. And I don't, I definitely think if he had said the B word, I mean, Tommy would have kicked him off and, you know, it would have been a whole thing. But the reality is that I don't know any man that's going to sit there on national TV and take a woman calling him out and saying that he don't have now, nothing. All, all these shows are based on that. They do it all the time. They don't. No, no, not all the women do that all the time. That's Are you saying that you wouldn't have been embarrassed? No, no. What I'm saying is when the men and women go back and forth and they have an argument and y'all say, you know, a man's less of a man who responds and even not say just walk away because there's no winning. That's the only way you can't win. Even if you're right, you can't win. But that's what I'm saying. You're and you're you gave her a pass. You were like, well, what she said no, wasn't no, that bad. To me, it was surface snapping back and forth. I'm looking at you and I'm saying what, what I physically see right now. He went all in starter stomach and all this crazy, like it, it's something that was true. That's crazy. A tomb's tide is not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, but maybe she didn't want people to know. Like, come on, at this point, you're well, maybe he didn't want people to know his name was fake and that he was a scammer. Diamond Tester on stage for them to like, he could blow that, like, whatever. You're 
earrings are fake. Just go keep it on that. But I don't know. It's first of all, girls wear fake earrings. That's not a big deal for you to tell me. That's not the same. Women, women, that's not the same. We just disagree. And it's okay. We dis we disagree. I think they both were being horrible to each other. And I think fair exchange is no robbery. Both of them were just it was ugly. And and I wish they wouldn't have done that. Oh, that, that's just the beginning. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. That's I, I definitely know. Um, let's talk about let's talk about the situation with Will because I'm sure that's gonna come up um at the reunion. Um I had to get Will, by the way, just so y'all know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm sure Will doesn't, but he's what look, last thing, everybody is welcome. Anyone that wants to come is welcome to come on the show. Whoever yeah. wants to share their story is more than welcome. Um, but Mo wasn't backing up the man. He was actually backing up Mika. That's the thing. He was actually, Mo actually is having Mika's back. Yeah, see, I'll be already getting it twisted. It's bad enough y'all be getting other stuff twisted. On the, yeah, I was I was actually backing her up. Or just saying he didn't, whatever, but in any case. Go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Um, no, I'm saying so with his situation with the women saying that he didn't have any money, that he was sleeping on the floor because he was stage, uh, staying in an apartment that he had staged. Right. I'm sure this is going to come up because this caused him to go home because this, this season has been crazy because the people have been, we know what people are saying behind closed doors. Right. So... Alexis going back and telling Will that um, uh, Patrice right. told that he was sleeping on the floor in one of his properties that he was staging for a, I'm assuming to sell to somebody, right. ended up making the women think that he didn't have any money and that he were he was broke. Um, so we came so, back to the big chain on the reunion to be yeah. like, look. <laughs> Let, let me look at the chain, cause I, I let me look at the chain. People are saying the chain. Oh, you don't know me anything about so, me. Okay, then. She's we had one conversation. Well, we had one conversation because he got mad because we called him thirsty because he was. I wasn't thirsty. That's what happened. What would I be thirsty over uh, a girl that got? Two I ain't even gonna get into. It. I ain't please gonna say what say I want it, to say. Please say it. You're not my type. Scammer, please. I'm a scammer. You a scammer? I'm a scammer. Bitch. What you is? You a baby mama with your tools tied? Woo. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> He knew he was wrong. That's what can be said. I ain't even gonna say it. No, I think he didn't want to say it. Okay. I think he, I think he felt like it was gonna be bad. I think that's why he didn't want to say it. Um, but we're gonna get into all that. But first, we're gonna bring on um, a very special alumni from Ready to Love. Um, I, I just get tired of seeing all the negativity, and so I felt like we needed to switch and right. and celebrate something that is positive. So. You guys, the EXO audience, please help us welcome the only ready to love couple besides Joy and Clifton <laughs> that I feel like has actually made it in this authentic, let's welcome Dr. Camille and Cornelius to the show. How you doing? How you doing? Mo was supposed to do a hand clap. I'm doing it. I'm doing it right. <laughs> hey, Krista. Hey, guys. Welcome. Welcome. Please come on in here. We... We are sure we're having a conversation about this show and I just, I really did. I was excited because you guys have, you guys have stood the test of time. You're engaged. We, well, I mean, Hey, the test of time in this, with this show could be past the reunion, <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are still together. You're getting married and you have, what I like about you guys as a couple is we know that you're together, but we actually see that you have more, that you you don't put everything out, right? That, that it feels like a real life situation as opposed to every other day, you're posting something to show us, see, we really are in love. We really do. I post my selfies. You do. And, and, and we see other things that you have going on. Cornelius, I have seen some modeling from you as well, but it doesn't feel like you guys are trying to force the relationship on the fans in order to get a spinoff. Oh, no. Can I just say that? That is the last thing <laughs> that we need in our life. They probably, they probably try to tear it up some more. Lord. <laughs> we don't want it. We don't want it. Mm -mm. No, I think you guys yeah, might. I wouldn't be opposed to it now, no. but then, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
And you right. kind of like get some, yeah, get some time to kind of like let things fizzle out and kind of like, all right. Yeah. I'm definitely the role model of a, a, a role model on how this thing could actually work, you know. You, you have to step away. You can't um, stay in the show. After mm -hmm. the show ends, you have to step away and you have to genuinely build without the cameras. There you without go. Without people being in oh, your really, business. really, really. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I, wanna, I want to, um, you know what I should have did? I should have pulled this, but I didn't get to do this in time. But Cornelius and Camille, I asked Camille, would they come on? Because first of all, we wanted something positive. Um, and then also they are in a, they're doing an online contest celebrating their wedding. And so I went to, to vote for them, but I wanted to make sure that we all as a family, you know, got a chance to vote for them as well. And so I'm going to put this link in the chat. And we would love you guys to share with us a little bit more about this uh, Blackwell Barn and Lodge uh, social media contest that you guys have going on. So, um, yeah, I guess I'm the one that's going to, since I'm the one to answer this. Um, so we were actually not going to have um, a big wedding. We were definitely thinking justice of the peace. Um, my best friend actually sent me the link and was like, because she's a event planner, wedding planner. And so she's like, no, you need a wedding. Um, I've never been the type of young lady that's like, oh, white dress and 50 million people there. I, I embarrass very easily, believe it or not. So I wanted something very small, very intimate. Um, I had um, opened the link and it was literally like four days before the contest ended. Um, and I entered us because I'm the only girl in my family. I know my mother probably wants to experience. She said, I won't put no money on it, though. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to pay for it. Like, but... I put money on it, but I kind of want something. But I also, I'm not the one, when it comes to weddings, I don't believe in spending $50,000 on a wedding. I don't believe in... 10000 Well, <laughs> you might cheap, be but... paying 10 But I just don't believe in putting all that. My mother is basically like, I will give you money for a down payment on a house. Yeah. Um, something that you will have in hey. that you, equity, all the great things. Yeah. But as um, far as like a wedding, she's like, mm -mm, mm -mm, I'm not yeah, paying for it. No, yeah, so. yeah. So this, so this, um, this contest basically would it allow you guys? Would they pick up the cost for your wedding? They would pick up the cost for our wedding. They pay for the photographers. They pay for the flowers, which are expensive. Um, they pay for the food. Uh, the videographer. videographer. Um, yeah, basically. Okay. They would just have to say everything except the tux and the dress. tux dress. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I love, so, I love that. So I love that. A blessing. Um, again, I feel like out of all the chaos that came out of ready to love, uh, this would be the blessing. Yeah. The blessing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm putting, I put Camille's, I'm trying to, I tried to put the link in the chat, but it would not let me. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put a banner up with it um, here just in just a second. But what I did is I put Camille's Instagram page in the chat, the link there. You can go to her page and click on the, the link in her bio and it'll take you there. And then in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and um, see if we can get a banner up so that we can do that. But, but before we, before we, you know, um, go a little bit further with that. I want to make sure that we're doing that tonight. If you guys are watching this um, on your phones, you can just hit that link, go, go there, hit those links and go ahead and just vote for them because we want to make sure that we're supporting them. We are every week we are supporting foolishness. <laughs> so I want to make sure that we're supporting something that's positive as well. Family represent, come on out, come strong. We got you. Yeah, I love that. I, I love that. I love that they're together. I check in with Camille sometimes just to see how things are going. And I just love that you guys have this relationship that you're really working on. And, you know, when you put up that post and, um, you know, like who would have thought that you would actually meet the love of your life on the show? We were talking earlier about how it seems like people are not going on the show with genuine intentions. Right. That seems to be a really big thing. What were both of you guys thinking before you signed up for the show? Specifically, I want to hear from both of you guys, because it seems like men have a different thought process than women do when it comes to, you know, possibly being able to fall in love on television. Right, right, right. I think for me, I was open, right? I think mm -hmm. I was, you know, genuine, like, even when I was doing my audition and, and, and the interview process, I was like, I'm going to just be myself. 
and we'll see what happens. If they don't like me as myself, then it wasn't meant to be. And mm -hmm. I, myself, and that's how I came on. And, and as soon as I walked in the doors, I just said, I'm just going to be me and, and just let's, let's see things fly. And um, initially, yeah, I won't get into the details of the show. I'll, I'll re rehash the show over again. But uh, initially, once I got in there, I thought I was going to be acting because <laughs> I, I don't really see nothing. But, you know, once she came in, it was like, all right, now I'm for real. Now I can see, you know, myself really being serious about this thing. So, okay. What about you, Kabil? So, I definitely went on the show to find, I find somebody. Um, I think during the initial stages, they were like, we're going to have all these handsome, eligible bachelors in DC. And I was like, yes. And they asked me what, describe your uh, your dream guy. We have like 10 of those. I was like, yes. <laughs> and then I walked through that door. I was like, no. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I definitely went on there uh, excited, thinking I was going to find. She was looking crazy while we just. <laughs> Listen, it was, first of all, it was hot. She was like, what is going on? I was is, this, is this it? Ain't nobody else coming through the door. I literally, on that first day, I was like, let me think of how I'm going to self eliminate. I like. When L Libba was actually the one to go home, I was gonna like interrupt her. It was gonna be a whole scene. But then I just was like, never mind. Were the guys that unattractive to you besides Cornelius, Camille? No, I was I, I was a little bit better than probably you were. Like, yeah, I was no, he more. was, yeah. yeah I was okay, more. okay, okay. He was. She yeah. Was like, eh, I can go home. <laughs> so I had my list, and I know people say get rid of your list. I had my list, and I was gonna keep my list. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't about to settle because I want you to date him. No, right. no. So the questions that they showed me asking, um, besides the credit thing, but that's important because people get off some shows and you find out they got a 400 credit score, <laughs> live with their mama. Yes. I, I, like, I don't even want to be connected. Not 400. <laughs> but I mean, I don't. I have made sure that my life, I am positioned myself financially, uh, career-wise, academically, and I need somebody that was equally yoked. So I definitely was asking questions, and I kept getting upset uh, yeah. when I kept talking to people because. <laughs> well, and the thing is, too, really coming off, I think for us, it was more so like, hey, uh, do you want to do this for real? And I think that's yes. what was, you know, what we kept asking each other. Even now, I still ask, you know, get check, check in, where, where, where you at? where's your head at still? You know what I mean? You just got to be real. And so, you know, even as we're, you know, going on, you know, during that time period, especially last year or so, people was like, y'all been they dating for a while, now what y'all doing? I'm like, man, we've been trying to do the work because it took like a year or so to get the show out of your system. And then, you know, she's working on her doctrine and all that. So it was like, now we're trying to really date in the mix of all that. It's, it was definitely difficult. So that's why we took so much time. And I went to like, you know, a couple of pre-engagement counselings. Uh -huh. And then as well as now we're going through a premarital counseling. Pre um, just to make sure you know, you're going through all the finances, make sure you basically um, vent as much as possible, vet as much as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest difference once the cameras were yeah. off and everybody was away? What was the like the contrast between the two? I wasn't as animated. Mm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You talking about like personalities, or are you talking yeah, about just like your personality? The cameras are gone. Was it an XL? Was it a like of? Uh, uh, no, it was strange. Nothing. Well, for, uh, for for me, it was, it was. I mean, for me, I can turn on social media, right? I can be like, all right, whatever. You know, I can laugh at some stuff. And then I, if it gets to me too long, I'll turn it off. Mm -hmm. Camille was like, nah, I'm being here and I'm going to go back and forth with these folks. And, and I'm like, dude, you taking too much time doing that. Like, it's yeah. a waste of energy. And so a lot of that was me trying to get her to pull away from that that mindset. Because he um, was not responding. <laughs> like, people were talking about me. And I used to be like, they talking about me too. say something to him. Like... <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, thank you for watching the show. No, <laughs> no. At the end of the day, you got to know the business, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, can't, you can only respond to so many people. I've learned. And at the end of the day, yeah. if people are coming at you, where it's going to always be somebody left field come and say something else. So yeah. why waste that energy? And they so, want you to respond. So don't yeah. give them what they want. Yeah, so why waste that energy? Yeah. Like I said, right. at the end of the day, I looked at her. I told Camille, I said, hey, if I saw you in the club or I saw you on the street somewhere, I would approach you. Right. So that was my foundation was like okay you know what regardless of if it was a show or not if mm -hmm. i saw you i would go up to you you know what i mean so it was like mm -hmm. that's what kind of kept me like all right all right but that's most men they they are attracted to the physical first and then once that's you get off right. the show you start digging and peeling back mm -hmm. those layers of who is this person really mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
And as mm -hmm. I said, we we have a, so much in common. Um, we have a lot of differences too. We do. <laughs> Listen, most importantly, this is my friend. There you go. We, he is my friend. We get on each other's nerves, but we mm -hmm. always come back. Just before we got on, we had to pray. <laughs> I'm going to keep it real. <laughs> I, I had to pray for us because he was doing too much when I got home. Uh, it was a lot. lot of it was a lot. Uh, in the house. Yeah. Yeah, but so how, how, how important is it to, okay, there's this relationship and then building a friendship at the same time? Like at the, you know simultaneously. I mean, I know some people start off as friends and become mm -hmm. lovers, or but doing it at the same time and then starting off on television. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Did you well, take well, it really for real? And how was important? How important is the friendship? Yeah, I mean, friendship is definitely very important because you want to be able to spend, able to spend time with them. And I think us able to like be jovial with each other, laugh with each other back and forth. I think that helps. Uh, mm -hmm. Even. Like settings you can be mad at each other but then i think we get in certain settings you can just laugh about certain things and be jovial and she has a certain like wild personality i'm more chill about it but then yeah. i can be in certain settings i can be you know out outgoing too so it just you know it kind of just like you know balances each other out a little bit um, yeah i think it sounds like good that <laughs> um that you guys have that balance because like with camille saying like she wanted to pop back. If 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 you were doing the same thing, Cornelius, y'all would both be going. It, it, you got to have a balance, you know. And then if, she was, if she was as low key as you, somebody may try to play in y'all's face. So somehow you need her to be like, no, we're not going to do that. And then you to pull it back. So I, it, balance is really, really important. And I think that's, you know, key. Um, let me ask you guys this, because the show actually, ironically, for you guys being one of the only couples that we've seen from Ready to Love that has made it. I think there, well, there's Mario mm -hmm. and Reba from season mm -hmm. um, obviously joined Clifton. Mm -hmm. But for you guys to be one of the few that have made it, your time on the show was fraught with a lot of issues and drama. Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like the show tried to tear you guys apart in some way, specifically the way yeah. it was done. So yeah. did the show at all, once it came out, because you know, after you guys filmed, and then they came out and you had to deal with the way it was edited and then some of the differences that you saw. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time where the show really did kind of come in between you guys' relationship and you had to kind of say, dang, they they really, it really is hard for us to get through this because it, it, there was a lot thrown at you guys, you know, that season to kind of make it look like you guys shouldn't be together. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, making it look like she possessed me in the relationship, whatever, I don't have a backbone, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it took, like I said, it took that, whole year to kind of really get that out of your system and then made then some you know yeah uh, to kind of really get that out of your system to say hey this is not real it's a business um you know we signed a contract that they can do this you know what i mean mm -hmm. we just got to know what we sign up for and just accept it and and at the end of the day be able to pull away and say hey that's why we went to all the in, in counseling she was like why don't we go to like two or three i was like we, we, need, it. we need so all of three them different <laughs> we need all we still need some more but yeah we needed all of them you know what i mean because it, it had to we had to detox you know all of that stuff out you know and not letting other people's expectations or what they saw impact the relationship you i mean, know? We still, mean mentally too as well we still get dm like oh she you gonna walk all over him and oh he ain't got no back and it's literally like get it get a life yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they still showing they still showing repeats and stuff I'm sure. I, so people probably just catching up and watching I, it so. I, I get it but i mean we're we're here now and yeah. we're happy we're there happy. you go yeah and stepping away is if anybody is watching and they want to do the show <laughs> understand that you have to you have to remove yourself yeah. from the show mm. whether you self-eliminate or just walk <laughs> away. if you yeah. want something real uh -huh. yeah everybody wants to get to the bridge it's, it's not that important yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's really sure. not that important yeah yeah put, put things in its proper place i think that's the biggest thing and i think Honestly, what kept us going is that you had my back, I had your back. Like, yeah. d despite what was on yeah. the television, uh -huh. and, and that's crazy. It's kind of like blind trust. Like, yeah. I, and it was times where it was like, okay, should we give up? You know, it was a lot of times even like, you know, as, as certain things pop up again, like it kind of brings a trigger. It's uh -huh. like, hey, and then we arguing all over again about some stuff, you know, that happened two years ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like, you know, do we really want to keep doing this from this particular situation? I think, end of the day, I think on her end and my end is like a uh, not give up 
type of spirit that yeah, we're we gonna, gonna have, keep, I guess. We gonna keep so it's not like, you know, some people may be may be able to do that. You know, it's, that is hard to have. So because yeah. of her mindset, you know, wanting what she wants, I have my same mindset. I think that able, was able to kind of fight, fight for the relationship. The easy thing would be you go your way, I go my way. But mm -hmm. you have two people that are willing to fight, like that's what makes the relationship beautiful. We fought yeah. for what we have and we're gonna continue to fight, but you stuck with me for like, what, 50 more years? <laughs> What uh, what was it about each other? If you guys could each give us a like, what? How did you know? Because once the show is over and all that drama has worn off, um, how did you know that you that he was really the one for you? Considering it and it wasn't just the hype of you know falling in love on the show. Like, how did you know? What was it about him that said this is the man I want to be with? And then Cornelius, what was it about her that let you know that this was the woman that you wanted to marry? So he told me to go first because he has to think about his. No, I, I, I was trying to let it go first. So honestly, um, one thing that I took from the show, I didn't take much, was you have to do something different. You have you can't continue to, to repeat those same patterns. Mm -hmm. Cornelius is not the typical guy, personality-wise, that I used to attract. Mm -hmm. uh, you're so <laughs> calm. Uh, like he is, he is the right. calm to my fire. Yeah. I used to be in relationships that were like, we both come in there and be like, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and they're like, them too crazy. Yeah. He can get crazy, but he also is that common. I I, I was scared of it because I was like, I might run this man off, but I know that's what I needed. Mm -hmm. you know, he, he has given me, I know this is cliche, a soft life. Um, he has had my back through some of the toughest times in my life. Um, Which was the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but even like coming to my graduation, yeah. like literally has had my back. Even when he's like mad at me, it's like, I got you. Begrudgingly, I got you. <laughs> um, but I, I, I knew that this is something that I've never felt before. Um, mm -hmm. This is a person that I've, I've never experienced before. And again, uh, he prepped. Pray. Anytime I was going through something, he's like, you about to pray. That's beautiful to me. Like, yeah. Yeah. I've never had that before. And yeah. I know that this that was something that I wanted to continue. Yeah. Dope. Okay. Uh, you kind of went long-winded. I, I mean, need to go that long-winded. Cornelius, have you thought of yours yet? <laughs> But I mean, really, just that right there, what we just did. I mean, I think that's what, you know, kept me attracted. You know, of course, she's a beautiful woman, but I think overall, she just has a good heart. I think that's, and she has good character. Uh, she didn't have the character that she had. Even when we had our moments on camera, she would always apologize and hold, you know, hold herself accountable. I think that's, you know, I want to say women, you know, women hold themselves accountable is a little hot out here in these streets. You know what I mean? I mean, it is, to be honest. But, um, you know, she holds herself accountable. She has good um, <laughs> you laughing at me. <laughs> but I mean, hold, but she she has good character, and I think that's the overall the foundation of everything. You know, she she wants good. She she wants to uh, see see people do good. She wants to see good, good of me and good of my family and and everything that I have. And um, she's very you know she's very given. She can she would buy gifts and you know things like that as well. So it's like it was a lot of that. And then like I said, she knows how to play and be jovial and. Yeah, and you know, like you have fun, and, and I cook good. And there's times, it's, it's funny too. It's funny too because there's times where like, and he, and he, can you talk cook, about my cooking? Cook. Okay, can okay, you tell? Okay, no, okay, can I you tell cook. him how good I, I cook? Say, I cook like <laughs> every day. <laughs> hey, oh, sorry. Hey. So I, I was gonna say was she actually? It's funny. I'll be thinking it, and then that's actually how even I re realize this and, and notice this on even on camera that it's things that I'll be thinking, but she'll say it. <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing she's thinking. Uh -huh. she she, but we're thinking the same thing, but she'll actually just say it. I'm glad you said it because I sure yeah. think the same thing. So yeah. it was certain things like that that kind of like brought you know brought us kind of together. Cool, cool, cool. You can please cook. mention cooking. Please mention the cooking, Cornelius. I'm a southern boy, so I like to eat. So yeah, she definitely is definitely. So I cook all the time. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you guys this because i know that you guys don't watch um the show all the time but it seems like the last couple of seasons it's been a lot of women and men like going back and forth uh, a lot of times it's the women going back and forth and the men maybe disagreeing but this it's a lot of 
women and men going back and forth, trading insults, belittling each other. Mm -hmm. And I was saying before you guys came on that it bothers me to see that with anybody. And I know that, you know, a lot of times women feel like they should be able to do it because it's, 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 I guess it's okay for women to go at men, but men shouldn't say anything back. And then sometimes men feel like I, I just, but I just hate seeing us do that to each other. Do you guys have any thoughts on what, what is happening on the show and the trajectory? Cause even when they left DC and went to Miami, it just, it, it, that kind of thing started, you know, it started back. It was like, you know, a, a man calling a woman, a, a, a fake B. And then this, this season people saying, you know, you, you don't, you got your tubes tied. Nobody wants you. And you're, you're a scammer. You don't have no money. Like it's just negative. So yeah. what are your thoughts from being on the show and then watching sometimes how we as black men and women are treating each other? Well, Man, that season but, was toxic. That's, that's when it's toxic. toxic. That's but when I, it started. But honestly, though, even even going even further back than that, the foundation of it all, even you look at social media, you look at certain pages, like it's the same thing, right? It's just what's shown on TV is just a, a, a imitation of that. You know, what how we go like, oh, it's the, man, it's the man's fault. It doesn't, he don't do that. The woman's fault. She don't do this. So it's, it's social media and then it's just going over to TV, you know, and I think at the end of the day, I think it's just, we need more positivity. Like you said, we need more people to be positive in those moments mm -hmm. uh, to show a difference, especially for black people, man. I think, I hate to say it, we can be the most toxic <laughs> culture, man, out there, man. We have so many different words. Like even when I was on my season, they was calling me a simp. They was calling me, uh, oh, he's gay. Like it was so many different things they were calling me. And I'm trying to just be a nice Christian guy, you know what I mean? And so. <laughs> It's just, it's just negativity. Woo! Even when you see something good, it's like, I gotta find, pick for find something negative. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it's, it, we gotta do better, man. I think we just need more representation on TV. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, I guess they go with what makes money, but we do, yeah. we do need more positivity uh, on TV, especially when it reality TV. I mean, when it comes, I saw the clip that you're referring to. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> the reunion is is always very very heated, but you don't have to engage. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, if anything anybody can say anything about me on that reunion, mm -hmm. I got everything nice. curled. Everything ahead. curled at me. Here, nice. for this, like this. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. No, but at the end of the day, I, I knew that it was going to get negative at some point. Yeah. I I actually prayed the day of the reunion. I prayed that morning. I was playing church music. I was riding up there. You know, because yeah, I knew it was about. I knew yeah. it was about to some smoke and as soon as that yeah. second half hit i was like oh here we come and yeah. i knew and i knew it was gonna come at us but i said end of the day silence is golden if you show if you if you retaliate back it's gonna show you being more negative but if you just allow it it's coming like hey at the end of the day i think people saw like hey they're they're being ones being attacked versus yeah. them no, on the I attack. didn't see that so i mean some people did some people didn't i mean they but, probably didn't see it on the show but i think that what happened afterwards speaks to the, what was really going on because we're only going to see the edit, you know, people get upset. Um, it, it, but I think you have to understand as people going on a reality show that people are responding to an edit. Mm -hmm. And so when they're responding to an edit, you have an opportunity to show up as yourself on your own social media platform and interviews like this to show people who you really are. And I think both you guys did a great job of that. And I think people were able to see the reality, but if you show up doing the same thing, <laughs> talking crazy and going after and it's, then it's kind of like, okay, so we saw what it really is. Um, but I just wish that we got a chance to see more of this, which is why I was glad to have you guys on. Um, thank you guys so much. We have some people that are already voted. If you haven't voted, make sure, don't do it later, do it now so that you make sure you don't forget, go and vote for Camille and Cornelius at barnandlodge.com. We have to have them, those other couples, we wish them well, but we have to make sure that Cornelius and uh, Camille get this because I don't know if we would even get a wedding special. I think that would be awesome, but at least we want to make sure that they have their the support of the people that watch Ready to Love are supporting them and wishing them well um, mm -hmm. with their upcoming nuptials. So, Mo, did you have you had something you yeah. wanted? To Quick question for both of you, but I want uh, Cornelius to answer first. What advice would you give men that make it to the bridge? There's the connection. Y'all both agree to be with one another. What advice would you give to the man? And for Camille, what advice would you give to the woman? This advice is how to come off or? Yeah, well, well, moving forward, like, okay, like, I guess the curtain is pulled off. You guys are driving off, arriving off into the sunset. 
you know, the show was over, what advice would you give them? Like we were saying earlier, you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier about um, unplugging and turning everything off. So I just want you to expand on that a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, definitely, um, you know, taking media fast is, is definitely very key. Uh, I'll say get off there at least seven days if you can, um, just to detox. Um, and really, especially if you connect with somebody, I think the biggest thing is, is both of y'all doing that because a lot of times how it kind of with, with us, the edit can kind of, you know, the way it's shown, like the, what happened in real life can actually uh, mess with, you know, the TV can actually mess with what happened in real life. So it's like one of those things you're kind of like, all right, if we, if we pull out and don't allow people to come in, you know, cause you, when you got social media open, it's the floodgates is open. Anybody can reach out to you. So um, I think doing the work behind the scenes, um, figuring out, first of all, figuring out that's what you really, really want. And if it is what you really, 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 really hey. want, then, you know, make sure you take the proper steps uh, to make sure you take, you know, go on dates and plan stuff and uh, you, show the person how you feel. Huh? I recommend watching the season together. We watched like the first two episodes. Like, it, was, it was all hell at the producer. So I said, I ain't watching this with you no more. He's sitting up there so, laughing and I'm looking at him. What you was, laughing about? That ain't funny. It was good to me because I look at it at TV, you know. Um, but, I didn't like um, it. I didn't like it. But uh, yeah, the first episode, she was going in, you know. But um, yeah, I would just say, yeah, they definitely the pull, pulling out. That's the initial thing. When you first initially come out the show, I'll say. Pause. Uh -huh. Pulling what? out. What? Oh, my Never mind. <laughs> pull away. <laughs> pull away is definitely very, very key. Social media can be the devil if you let it. Okay. And you, Camille? A little bit of what he said, um, sitting down and just having that talk with yourself. Is this real? Is this really yeah. what I want? Am I, am I settling? Uh, because again, you're like, oh, wow, everybody loves me. And I mean, especially for us, that didn't happen. It wasn't <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't let but, people gaslight you. Yeah, don't let them gaslight you. Yeah. Really do have that uh, self-reflection of, am I in this for the right reason? You right. don't want to be stuck with somebody for the next three years just because you guys are getting attention online. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a life mm -hmm. decision, right, which is right, also right. the reason why we didn't rush for anything. Like, we got people mm -hmm. talking about, when y'all gonna get married? Like, <laughs> every other day, when y'all gonna get married? <laughs> it's not about timeline with us. It's making sure that this is a lifelong mm -hmm. decision. We're not mm -hmm. we're not divorced. And, and, and they actually probably come at, at the woman. I don't know why, people don't really, I mean, at doing the show, people's coming at me, but don't come at me like that, I guess. I don't know. Maybe they know she's not respond. They come at her. I don't know. But they don't <laughs> well, I mean, the reality is, and I've said this before on my show, you know, own is um, predominantly, the, the audience is predominantly females, black females, right? And we are the hardest on each other, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, we really are. Um, we're hard on men, too, but we are very um, judgmental of each other. And I think that comes from us needing to heal. There was a lot of conversation that season with the women. You know, and just I think there's just a lot of healing that we have to do as black women. And so yeah. I think that that it, that is one of the reasons that you see people go so hard on the women and not really as hard on the men. Yeah. Um, but because it's, it's, it's women. And if you notice, usually men are harder on men. Right. And women are harder on, on mm. women. Just like in that clip that we saw earlier, Mo basically gave Mika a pass. I, I think some of that could be because Mika is a beautiful woman. <laughs> but yeah. she wasn't that bad. And it was like, I guess you did. I'm yeah, like, what? Hey, make me want to watch the reunion again. I make me watch it. Watch it. Oh, okay, okay. It came on. Well, I, again, <laughs> I feel like they both had some fault in it. He, he yeah. Should, he said, I'm not going to say nothing. He should have just let, let it at that. There you if go. If they call you a, a simp, whatever they call you, let them call you that. The you, sit, you sit back and you take it. And so then they'll tap her. Why she going on? She didn't even respond. Why she going on him like that? Yeah, that's he true. Yeah, it was ugly though. I was like, oh, I'm gonna play it for Cornelius. Hold on, Cornelius. I want you to see the clip too. Hold on. In the meantime, while you guys are we're gonna run this clip back again. In the meantime, make sure you guys go over to Barn and Lodge and vote for oh. our couple today. People are voting, people from vote are voting. Oh my and, and then we gotta ask you guys a couple more questions before we let you go. But let's let's let Cornelius see this clip. And I definitely want to hear because I do think that. You know, men, um, real true men that are that understand the definition of manhood, look at things from look at male behavior differently than women do. Right. So I think that could play into why Mo is so, you know, oblivious <laughs> to Mika 
and so hard on Will. You don't know anything about you me don't know either. anything about so, okay, me. We had one conversation. Well, we had one conversation because he got mad because we called him thirsty because he was. I wasn't thirsty. That's what happened. What would I be thirsty over uh, a girl that got two? I ain't even gonna get into it. I ain't please gonna say what say I want it, to say. Please say it. You're not my type. Scammer, please. I'm a scammer? You a scammer. I'm a scammer. Bitch. What you is? You a baby mama with your tools tied. What? Ooh. This is so nasty. This is how oh, I want to go out there. He looks terrible. You unattractive, you bad built, That's you a cool. little man. You got a BBL. Your body not real. All right. That chain not real. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Big man. It was the tubes tied. That was the oh, that was the part. I yeah, just, that was a little low, low, low. See low, what I'm saying? Low, low. So, I don't know. Did she ever? I don't know. Did yeah, he knew. That was a little low, man. Yeah, they went. They went to the gut juggler on that clip. Ugh. Man. Yeah. Ugly. So who was? Who I. I mean, like I said, is is he went for the juggler on that clip? I you, mean, you think he was wrong? Are they both? They both was going at each other. Right. Yeah, they both was going at each other. But she was talking about his wealth. And I think men like that, if you talk about a man's what they have, that's what so I got a nice crib though. So I don't know. He might got some of that wealth. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know. I said, well, they were girl. they tried to make it seem like he didn't have anything. And I think that to me, it's uh, like, you know, we all know, and none of us are in kindergarten. We all understand men are judged by what they have. And women yeah. are judged by how they look. Yeah. So it, it's not right, but that's just what it is. So when you tell oh. a woman you oh. got your tubes tied and you got a fake body, and then she says you you don't have no money, you got a fake chain, you a scammer, they're equally yeah. going at what right. is right. going to look yeah. unattractive. It's not better or worse. They're both trying to make one another belittle each other in yeah. front of all the rest of the people. And, 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 I don't, no, and any it, man that wants to be belittled like that, or any woman that wants to be belittled like that. Yeah, I was gonna say being devil's advocate, you know, being there behind the scenes. Um, it, it's I think I think people I think you're trying to defend yourself, right? And I think it's one of those things where I don't want you to have the upper hand on me, right. and, and and I don't want you to have the upper hand, and especially when you're looking at it from you know this might be both of their first time being on TV, being on reality TV. So you got your family and friends watching. You don't want them to be come back to you like why you let them say that to you or why you let them say that mm -hmm. to you and mm -hmm. so it's not even just you're not just even thinking about yourself you're thinking about other people behind you that's going to be like Correct. embarrassed by what you're letting them say you know what i mean so i think it's it's that pressure too you know what i mean so that's why i kind of give some, some i mean yeah, you're still wrong you're still completely wrong but i do understand how somebody can try to defend themselves on national tv and you want <laughs> you know get, get get you know you go for the juggle i'm going for the juggle right back I, I, no, I didn't so but at the same time people said i didn't have a backbone because i didn't say nothing you know what i mean yeah. so I, I was trying to take the higher road and not say nothing to be nice to everybody i was nice to people on the camera and off camera you know what i mean but to me it still turned on me in a sense because they was like oh well you have a backbone because you didn't stick up for yourself you so know what I mean? it's so, a no-win situation, no -win situation. Him. he's not gonna win whatever side of the coin he's gonna win. that's no what most said yeah he yeah uh, he's a villain, you know what I mean? So it's, it's hard. I do, I do think that Vanessa, I do want to give props to Vanessa because someone mentioned in the chat that she did not, Chaz did this whole dramatic thing, giving her a petrified rose and said, I can love, I just can't love you. And you, <laughs> it was ridiculous. And she did not engage. And you know, through the whole yeah. scene. Yeah, she did yeah. not. So I think that was, but I also understand that sometimes it probably sucks to, because I almost was like, Vanessa, you're going to have to say something because he just keeps on. He just keeps yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what people are thinking. You know? She wanted to say something. She kept her cool, though. Yeah, you could tell she wanted to say something because it was just, and she just said, Chaz does a lot. <laughs> like, but I feel like when you look at that situation, it made him look worse, which is why there are articles across, you know, social media saying that he was, he looked corny and he looked, it, it was lame because he, you do all that to somebody that's not even giving you back any energy on camera. So it just looks. Yeah. Oh, I saw that clip. It, it didn't seem real. No. It was. Who, who does that? It didn't I, seem can we say that's part of the dramatics? Cause with Chaz and yeah, because of the, the water and the ocean as it flows yeah. away and then looking <laughs> off into the sunset. It just didn't seem. Thank, thank you. I've been saying it the whole season. <laughs> just, 
a whole season. <laughs> they, they put the water back there. No, he, he had the, the petrified rose and he put it in the water. Oh, and I think I saw somebody. From oh, that. he had poetry all through the season, stuff he made up. He it was man. <laughs> He, so can we say he he was an actor? He was, he was acting. Actor. That definitely that definitely was a whole acting. We love the actors on Ready to Love. Yes. Okay, I, didn't, I, didn't I don't know if production <laughs> told him to do that. Um, he did say he was a poet, babe, but I don't. I, there, was, there was nothing poetic about a petrified rose. I've never heard anybody say a petrified like that. Was just a weird choice of words. Petrified. Dead. But he did he cried rose like almost like loving you would make me petrified. He said my love for you is gone. But it was dead. It wasn't but what did he uh, he man into it? No, he was the flower. He was, my love died for you. Oh dang, that's messed up. With the yeah, it was, it, it was pretty deep. I was like, well, damn. He had the rose. So, but do we know what was going on behind the scenes? I just don't think anybody is organically that mean and that. It had, yeah. it had to be more something. Simple. I agree. Something had to I happen. Give everybody benefit of the doubt because I know stuff goes right. on behind the scenes. Nobody is just that malicious right. and right. that mean right. to say right. that I hear some flowers and here's this dinner. You don't know if it's good TV yeah. or this is how that person really is. Right. Because when you, those cameras come on, you you a whole different representative comes I agree. You. But I feel like people that are gonna get on reality TV because you have to know, regardless whatever you even if you're responding what you what you can and what you say can and will be used against you yeah, so okay. even if no. i'm saying like it's not there's no there I, is I, nothing I you can do <laughs> without production that can take even if it's you could be getting beat 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 when you finally respond they take that and then that's all the audience sees and what an audience sees, they will believe more than if they hear stories later. So there's really no way to get back. So even though Chaz, um, something definitely happened, yeah. but because he he took the bait and acted out, mm -hmm. Vanessa's always going to win. Right, <laughs> She's always right. going to win that. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's part of, that's part of it too, right? You know, like I said, you, you got to read the contract. Yeah. <laughs> but there's no way that you think I mean, that. you don't think it's going to be to that extreme, no. But you still got to read the contract and know this is what I signed no, up for. No, no. I'm, I'm, giving, I'm, giving I'm giving the business. <laughs> no, I think people know. We've heard all kinds of horrible things. I think it's, it's, it's kind of like since you guys see some people have been talking, these castmates aren't following the rules. They're doing their they're freestyle. They're doing their, their yeah. own thing and sharing. But um, I do want to ask you guys really quickly, to Camille specifically, because we know you actually came on um, Ready to Love, Make a Move with Zadia. And I think a lot of um, the Ready to Love alumni really enjoy being able to be on television and they are looking for opportunities to be on television again. Do you think that Ready to Love, Make a Move was a positive show? Do you do you want to see that show continue? Um, I, actually, I would. I want to see, um, see it with the guys. Um, I, yeah, I would like that too. I, I think it gives an opportunity for you to cross cast and mm -hmm. it gives people a second chance. Like if you showed up as as uh the the villain mm -hmm. your season, mm -hmm. this is an opportunity to make changes. Um yeah. and to realize that, you know, even moving through the process, mm -hmm. I saw how I dated on Ready to Love. I'm going to try That's to do something different. different. So mm -hmm. I, I think it is a good idea, but nobody's moving. That's the only thing that's yeah, wrong that's with the, it. That's the only unrealistic thing about that. Yep. Yeah. Expect somebody to fall in love within three, four Six weeks. weeks. Yeah. But mm -hmm. maybe they need to like a lot, call it, change the name to like long distance lover or something. I don't know, but it's just it the whole moving concept. It it's doesn't. Not, I think they need to try uh, Ready to Love Fifty Plus. I think that would be good. Really? He talked about that. That would be good. <laughs> Come no. here, Real good. I want to see that actually. But first of all, it doesn't matter what age they you really get. know what you want. Then. No, <laughs> oh it doesn't God. matter what age you get. You're still watching right. the same drama. I think people that say it needs to be older people, it's still going to be rational. I would love to see, would love to see yeah. grandma. Because my grandmother, <laughs> when I tell you that Christian lady used to use every curse word in the book. My granny wasn't a Christian, but she would definitely cuss everybody out. But, it, but, but I do think you know what you want. You yeah. put up with less. But I will say, because I watched The Bachelor, The Golden Bachelor, mm -hmm. and those ladies were just as catty. Oh, wow. 
but they they had a lot of more pain because they had lost spouses they had you know yeah. they had gone through a lot of you know life gives you a lot yeah. of up and down there's life. actually the possibility there to be more trauma because you have experienced more they had more divorces like it was mm -hmm. just it gives them a second chance too. I think it just gives hope another second chance. I think it would do. I think that show really do well. It would do that, from the audience perspective. I think they would be more considerate. Like mm -hmm. it wouldn't be, yes. you wouldn't be attacking them as much because no, that's disrespectful. You're not gonna talk about yeah. uh, anime. Like we're not gonna do that. I don't know. The hey you seven her three says I don't want to see older black women become nurses with purses. You know what? Nurses have money. They always got the money in the bank and they have a good time. Nurses are fun. Mm -hmm. They are. So Fun people. Mo, well, you know about a lot of nurses, don't you? Uh oh. Yes, Crystal, I do. Thank you for letting everybody know that I know about nurses. School <laughs> teachers and flight attendants as well. Yes, thank you. Seriously, he has a whole long history with uh, and some theories about um, both school teachers and flight attendants. What, but that's what's scary about school teachers? Uh oh. We'll do a show on that one day. We'll talk about <laughs> What's going on with the teachers? Mo, you do know that Camille is a teacher. Oh, then uh, uh, her husband, I mean, her soon to be husband already knows that. <laughs> what does he know? I, I, I will leave that for that man to, you know, put out. <laughs> but, I'm, so I'm actually warned about everything. No, it's all a good thing. It's all a good thing. All good thing, yes. All yeah, great great. We're, we're adaptable. <laughs> We have to be. I don't think that's what it was. Oh, um, oh I know what it is. It, we rhymes with treats. <laughs> Why'd you start yeah. to like? <laughs> School teachers are supposed to be freaks. Is that what he's trying to say? That's what he's saying. <laughs> We're celibate. <laughs> are you guys celibate? We are waiting. Yeah, we are. Oh, I thought you were about to say no, a lot of these. No, yeah, we I love that. And I just want to also tell my audience if you guys are anywhere around Atlanta, please be careful. The news just uh, released information from the CDC that Atlanta has the third highest rates of HIV and AIDS. Like, seriously, people make fun of celibacy, but celibacy is going to keep you safe. Like, that is what people are out here wild. And I have a girlfriend who was a nurse. And she was telling me we were talking about it because I do things with Black Women's Health Imperative. And she was saying, you know, people don't realize that HIV is still going. It's still yeah. growing. The numbers yeah. are highest for Black women. And they are, they, people don't look, you don't know what it looks like. Like it just doesn't have any face and people are just consistently coming in. She said 60% of the patients, and she's in Midtown Atlanta, 60% of the people that come in that clinic are HIV positive. Mm -hmm. so I just want to say if there was ever a time to consider settling down yeah. and, 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 and practicing some self-control and discipline, it, it could be now and it could be you know or even just to, to practice self-love more so you ask more questions you right. find out what's going on you ask for clarity but like yeah that that is yes yeah, a lady from my church she said uh she said uh purity is pr protection yeah yeah that's a ooh, yeah, show Liz, i guess <laughs> yeah. Show Liz. yeah well we want to add last question for you guys for me is we want to make sure if you guys have not voted make sure that you go over to barn and Lodge, if you are watching this later, you did miss the live, you are still welcome to go over and vote. You can get in on this, even if you weren't here with the live, go on over, vote at Barn and Lodge, scroll down, you'll get a chance to see a little of Camille and Cornelius's love story. I will post it on, um, I'll post, Camille, if you'll send me that, I'll post it on um, this YouTube channel so people can see it and um, can share, make sure that we get them that. I wanna know what you guys are looking forward to doing You know, at your wedding. I remember for me, and Adrian, hey babe, um, it was important. We got married kind of like during COVID. So it was important for us for it to be intimate, for it to be someplace that people felt safe. And then we had, um, we just kind of went with things that were important to us. We are both outside people. We got married in Piedmont Park in the garden and we had sunflowers as our official flower because I felt like after meeting him, God had awakened the love in my heart that I thought was dead. You know what I mean? So it was just like, just, we, 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 we created our own, mm -hmm. um, I guess, um, 
what is it called when you have like rituals or symbolic? We created our own symbols for our own wedding. So what are you guys looking forward to? We know that you guys are very fashionable. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we know from them photo shoots, y'all like to turn up and do stuff. But what are you excited? What are you looking forward to doing to personalize your special day? Yeah, for me, man, I'm, I, yeah, I was thinking about good custom suits and something different, walking down the aisle. Um, I think I'm definitely looking forward to some dancing. Uh, Jukin. My Memphis Jukin. Jukin. <laughs> Represent my Memphis Jukin in there, you know, in reception or whatever. But I think the biggest thing is having, you know, it it would be a beautiful thing. I know I was, we was talking about, you know, I think when this opportunity came up to, you know, have your wedding paper, it's, it's a drop in a bucket for sure. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but at the same time, you know, we're thinking about Justice of Peace, you know, you know, think about all the family and stuff that's going to miss out. So it would be dope if we can have family and friends and uh, at least close ones there, you know, especially something that you waited this long to have. It would be nice to have something, mm -hmm. you know, so. Our families mm -hmm. meet together because my family's in California and his family okay. is in Memphis. So it would provide that opportunity for yeah. them to meet together as one. Cause yeah. One big old family. Yeah. I think for me personally, my um, father passed away. Um, so having my son and my brother walking down the aisle, I'm about to start crying. Oh, oh, do that. Do that. <laughs> oh I think I'm looking. I'm looking forward to that um, if we win. But yeah. Okay. Not make sure she's nothing. She's not working before you walk down the altar. You said make sure she's not working. My husband is in the chat. <laughs> oh, you were working. You were working. Well, I will tell you guys what happened. The people know that I represent TLC. They they were they had a show scheduled and the show got canceled and I had to release a statement to the media. So in my wedding dress, I was on my phone texting a statement and unfortunately he caught it. Like he wasn't even supposed to know that because he wasn't with me. He was supposed to be over with his grooms getting ready. But the photographer caught me sending the text and it was it was bad. But yeah. Oh, oh wow. Oh wow. Oh no, I'm not. Got married. It wasn't a big deal. He just always wants to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you gotta get your work in. I mean, that sounds like in. something you'll be doing. Oh yeah, but I'm I'm doing better. I'm doing better. I'm talking about him. Oh, okay. I was like, I'm Passing doing better. Something, that's not yeah. Hey. Hey. Well, we appreciate both of you guys hanging out. Again, you guys go ahead. We've seen people come through and have voted. Thank you so much, Kim Riley, oh, for that vote. And please keep in touch with us. Let please. us know what is going on and mm -hmm. um, make sure that we can continue to share uh, and celebrate you guys' upcoming big day. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I appreciate you. I know you definitely did a good thing as you definitely have interviewed us during the tumultuous time in there a little bit, you know. So I definitely appreciate you. When she said Crystal, I said, all right, better do it. You know? um, um, he said, she said, <laughs> he told me somebody else wanted to interview. I said, no, no. I said, <laughs> Somebody like Crystal, I interview with though. That's you know what I mean? So that's my special. That's my Crystal, you said uh, go walk the ocean. Like, oh, no, Crystal no. said it. Okay. No, no, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. But well, hopefully we will get a chance to do something with you guys. We wanted you guys to come to an event we were doing, and that event we weren't able to work out. The venue had some issues, yeah. but hopefully we'll be able no. to connect with you guys no. soon. Yeah, I'm gonna see you in Gilman, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys come to Atlanta. Let yeah. me know. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Definitely let me know. But thank you for hanging out tonight with us. And we will definitely, like I said, keep us posted on the contest. And Thanks. if you send me that, Camille, we'll put it up on, on the page. Thank you, Debbie, for people you. letting us know they voted. Michelle, thank, thank you. I yeah, appreciate you. your support, for sure. Thank you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Yeah, for sure. we Absolutely. Totally appreciate it. Absolutely. We love it, and we love you guys, and we can't wait to see uh, everything from that day. Yes. Thank you. Nice meeting you, Scorpio Mo. <laughs> Congratulations. I love it. <laughs> Give him <me> hope. <laughs> All, right. All right. So I love them. They're so cute and I and genuine because when I tell you they were exactly who they they have been who they were the entire time. So you know it's it's not fake, right? I love it. So what do you what okay, we're we're still trying to work through um that finale. We know that the reunion is coming up on Friday. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I I'm just like, come on, guys. I hope that it's part one, by the way, it's gonna be two parts. Yeah, that is part one. That is part one. That's I feel like that is probably one of the messiest clips that they have for part one. Um, I really want to know, and people were saying in the chat that Vanessa said that nothing happened. Um, 
that caused Chaz to do that. I would just love to hear from both of them. That just seems very strange that he would go to that extreme. Oh, we just might hear from one of them. You never know. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had Chaz for a few minutes, but he said he didn't want to talk about his situation. He just came on to um, support Laron. I do also want to say that Laron, I, you know, I have said from the jump that I like Laron. However, Laron has been looking, I mean, he has been really acting out. Laron has been acting out. I don't think that Laron's personality was a good fit for reality TV. Like he is very charismatic on the show because he wanted everybody to be, he wanted to, you could tell he was excited about the opportunity, but handling the backlash has obviously been something that he's not dealing well with because he's like going at people on pages and threads. Like it's just crazy. I mean, to me, after you know what you did, and I guess it's a year later, nine months later, you're, you know, if you're not over it by then, yeah. you know, yeah. like you, you know, and this is everybody's first time and it's triggering yourself to respond and that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. I, I just, I really wish he would, I will, I wish that he would kind of grow up from this opportunity. Oh, Maya that? I mean, me, yeah, Maya that. He you said it again? Don't be triggered by, you know, what passed it. Didn't he tell her that? He told us he told her that. He did. He, that's what he said. I At this point, I don't know what to believe. You know what I mean? So, I don't know what to believe because um, the past is on there saying that he's going at people from, I've just seen a lot. I've been sent a lot of, you know, text threads and information on you know him going back and forth with people oh, um, you, you know like it's almost over let like oh you buddy come on man you, yeah now i do think you know i agree with camille i think ready to love make a move would be great if they had the guys on next um and i think some of this acting out could just be for other opportunities so you know yeah i guess but is it really worth i mean you really want it because you didn't start out the villain you the villain now the villain now, definitely the villain now. After that situation with Mika and Maya, well, really with Maya, and then he blamed on Mika. Um, he definitely, you know, has come off as the villain. And honestly, I won't even say that. I think what made him the villain to me was the fact that he tried to switch over and stay on the show and really didn't like Maya knew that it was fake, right? So you're just trying to it was it was just it it just didn't go over well. But it was too obvious. He poured yeah. it. it was too obvious. You yeah. all, he had the meeting for himself. He tried to make it look like it was for everybody. He did. He tried. He tried. He tried, he tried that. And that's like, just, just be quiet. Don't try to come in and tell people, don't be possessive over your connections. And then you are the most possessive person. No, he already did it. Oh, Koshia. You That's know. what I'm saying. Like he just was the most. It was the same conversation with each of the ladies. And don't come on ready to love if you, if you're not comfortable seeing the person that you're dating go out with other people. Don't. It's just not a good place for you to be. Yeah. I also don't think we should come on ready to love if you have to do dramatic things with petrified roses. I, I just think that was bad. That was bad. And I, and I also feel like I don't. I got some questions about Patrice. Oh, well, that's a, I mean, you talking about like the last minute stuff with Chaz? Yeah, like the, the pivot, the pivot and, the, and consistent bringing up the fact that, well, I have butterflies over here, but, you know, right. should I pick him because he has a nice house and he's ready for a wife and he's put the time in to be prepared and it just feels really strange, you know? And no. and when you think about the fact that she also was the one that was like, oh, Will is in a staged place. Like, I can't imagine being with somebody. Like, she was really laying it on thick about that. It just feels very much like she did play the game to last and it was not genuine. Yo, but the ill part was, you, you see when Chaz came up to her, they were talking at a mixer. Mm -hmm. She was like, you got my number, right? He yeah. never think. Yeah. You know what I'm at that I time, believe, I don't believe that he really was into her. I think he was trying to get back at um, 
I think he was trying to get back at um I think he was creating as many options as he could. If what's the name? If uh Rashida didn't Rashida, Rashida didn't leave, it would have been her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because him going at Rashida with that again, I'm just stuck on the strawberries and the titty. Oh, I'm stuck there too. <laughs> I'm not mad at for that. But <laughs> they they all under the same roof, dog. Yeah. yeah. I had to know that was going to backfire at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do have something to tell you guys. So hold on. I've just have to I have to send this text. Um, go on the earlier show too. Sorry. Um hold on. I interviewed. I interviewed Risa Tisa. And uh, I will be sharing that interview next week. I'm excited to for you guys to see that. Um, but on. The, say it again. Still dragging on. It's well, um, we had a good conversation, and I will say, and this is why. I think that there's something to be even going back to the conversation with um, earlier, we were talking about in that clip with Mika, the children, the 20, the 30 to 50 yeah. year olds. She mentioned that, you know, part of the reason that she was um, susceptible to being taken advantage of was because she had turned 35 and she um, wanted to, um, Hold on, between eight. Hold on, this is work. Eight and nine a.m. Okay, I'm unfamiliar with Arisa. Uh, she was the woman that had the long episode, and people followed her story about a month ago. It was a real big deal on social media. She was, she'd been on every damn platform. She has been on every platform. She I, has. She's I been with America, Tamron Hall, and Crystal. Um, <laughs> Ed rolling out. But um, she mentioned that the reason that she was um, susceptible to that was because she was had learned that turning 35, she her her OBGYN was asking was she was she interested in having a baby and she said she decided that she had her job and she wanted to you know at 35 she wanted she was like when is it going to be my turn i want to have a man and a baby and a family as well and sometimes when we want something so bad we are willing to do whatever and ignore any red flags that there are and so I, I think that these shows, you see a lot of people making desperate moves. Um, a lot of times people are doing desperate things to be on TV. But when you look at some of the other shows, for people that want to be, a lot of times they put up with a lot that they shouldn't put up with just because they want the idea of being in a couple. They want to be. And I just I just think that's um, that's a conversation that we need to have. Like women do feel a sense of pressure. Um being a certain age, if they haven't gotten married and had children, she said her family was giving her a hard time. Um, I don't think men have the same pressure when it comes to age, um, because I don't think people look at men as that's something wrong. If you are a certain age and you're not married women, it's like, Oh, you must not be able to get a man or, you know, it's, it's just weird how our society does that. Yes, you did. So is it you, um, is it you dealing with stuff or are you forcing it like i think you're forcing it i think she was forcing it accountability right yeah and she took she took accountability she said she she said that she you know it was clear the man was lying i mean he was lying over and over and over and over again right, right. over and over again and it was lies that were that she was catching him in and then she stayed and then to listen to more that, lies. like somebody could lie to you but once you you're aware you see a pattern then I'm talking about the accountability part of you sticking around, not the beginning, because sometimes you, you you know, like um, we talk about being played and playing yourself. And she said that she said part of I because I asked her, was she over it? And she said that she was over him, but she wasn't over betraying herself. She was over his betrayal, but not over the fact that she had allowed herself. And that takes and I said, you know 
did you feel, did you ever, you know, second guess sharing that because you knew that people were going to, you know, beat you up about the fact that you had taken. And she was like, well, I was already walking around with a lot of guilt and shame, you know? And so that I already felt that I was already doing that to myself. So I think, I, I think it'd be interesting to have this conversation. Um, I had talked to Simone from Ready to Love Houston about it because she said, we all know that Simone went on um, several podcasts and shared that um, Rashid, uh, Rashid had lied to her about how much money he had and a lot of things um, that were hurtful to her. And she felt like, you know, people were judging Risa Tisa. And she was like, you know, I fell for some things and I did, I was tricked and betrayed just like she was. And so I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to. Gotcha. Um, wanting that really bad, being in a place in your life where you feel like the only thing that I don't have is that special person. And so you're willing to accept less, you know. And I, and I would say that, unfortunately, there are men that, I don't know if they sniff this out, but they yeah. play on it. Like they target, unfortunately, target women like that. Mm-hmm. And like, I I don't know what, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's a survival thing or it's just a me, like, I don't know what that is, but yeah. you, it's got to be something in you, a bottom feeder to like, prey on that. Yeah. Makes sense. I agree. I agree. And I, I, I agree. But I think that, you know what, I wanted to say this, and I know people may not agree with what I'm going to say, but I think that. Before, one of the ways that you can know, this is my dating tip for today. And it's based on that interview that I had with her. Before you start dating, how you know if you're ready to date is if you are really happy with yourself. Because if you are in a happy, confident place with yourself, you're not going to accept less. You're mm -hmm. not going to be intimidated by something. And a lot of times when you get the person and you're not happy with yourself, you sabotage the relationship. So I think until you are in a great relationship with yourself, you should not, you're not ready to date because you're not going to, you're not going to pick well. Yeah. You're not going to pick well. You're going to pick based on how you feel about yourself. That's what everybody does. Like that part. everybody picks when you are hurting or when you're, when you're um, nursing your wounds or when you feel insecure about how you look, you pick a person based on that feeling and, or you pick, you, you allow situations and circumstances based on what you're dealing with. And so in order for you to do the right thing and get and do right by yourself with another person, you need to make sure that you're in a great relationship with yourself. That means if you you know, if you need to work on getting your finances together, do that. If you need to work on getting your body together and getting your health in a good place, do that. If you need to work on getting yourself to a place where you're proud of where you live and you're proud of what you drive, then do that. If you need to work on getting your spirituality in check and making sure that you are, you know, you have other things going on and you have a healthy social life, then do that. Do not seek out a significant other when you have huge lacking areas that are going to come up to haunt you when it comes to that. Because if you feel like, for instance, if you don't have any for any friends, right? So you have no friends, you find a, a significant other, you start dating that person and then you have no friends, but they have a lot of friends. You're going to start feeling insecure. You're going to start, well, why are you leaving me? And because you don't have a life outside that person. Like you have to have a life outside of whoever you're dating so that when they come, they add to it. They don't become the full extent of it. So figure out. And, and it, it's just like, you know, if if a, if a person and I, I for me, I was a woman who did not want to date if my finances weren't right, because you guys know why I remember being on a date and I was trying to pay for my son to go to college. You remember that? My son got a scholarship. His college was $75,000 a year. And I he got a scholarship for $55,000. So I had to come up with $20,000 in a short period of time. $20,000 extra dollars. And so I was working overtime trying to you know, get that money. And I remember going on a date. And when I was on the date, I was preoccupied thinking about how I was going to pay this money. 
And the guy was, and I apologized to the guy because I couldn't really enjoy it. I was just like, you know, I was, I was in my head. And I realized like, I don't, he's a nice guy. I just didn't need to be on a date right then because I was trying to figure out how am I going to get this money for my son? And I'm at the date, but my mind is not really there. My mind really is on my money problems. And so I think that for me, I stopped dating until I got that situation taken care of. You know what I mean? I had, and then I had another guy that was like, I'll pay the whole thing. I'll write you a check for 20 grand. Well, I might've considered that a little longer than I should have because I needed the money. I didn't do it, but I'm just saying like, it, you know, if he had said that to me when I didn't need the money, it wouldn't even have been a thought. Don't do things when you're in a bad place. When you're in a bad place, if you're, for me, if I'm a little self-conscious about my weight, I, it's not a good time to date because I'm going to be focused on that. And then when I go out with him, I'm going to be wondering, is he looking at that? No, get yourself in a position where you're, and I'm not saying you're ever going to be 100% you know, happy with everything. But I'm saying those glaring issues that you know are not, you're not in a good place. Do not, do not. It's not a good time to date. It's a good time to work on yourself. Um, congratulations, Smack, to you. That is huge. My son graduates in December with a master's in psychology. Congratulations. I'm sending you lots of love. I know how that feels to be a mom that sees their child put in so much work. And then it's almost like you get your master's too. So congratulations uh, to you with that. Well, I know I'm going to meet an amazing woman. You know why? Why, mom? Because I feel amazing. <laughs> I feel amazing. <laughs> oh, I love it. Right. I love it. All right. Well, what is your, do you have a dating tip for tonight? Boundaries. Establish boundaries early, 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 early. Um, don't be afraid to feel like you're going to offend somebody. You don't have to be cruel or mean to establish boundaries, but do establish boundaries. Because I promise you, if it happens once, it'll happen again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is for men and women. This is not just for the men. Um, yeah. Establish boundaries. If you feel... Like something was disrespectful or made you feel uncomfortable, state that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't have to be nasty or mean about it. Just let them know. The earlier you do it, the better it is. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, we as men, we deal with beautiful women. We tend not to say nothing or we tend to go with the flow and, you know, because we don't want to disturb it or we think she's going to run away or go to another guy. But, you know, um, when you're dealing with someone and you play, especially if you're playing the long game, you know, these things will come up again, I promise you. And there's a way you can do it, but definitely establish boundaries. Men yeah. and women. Yeah, that's yeah. it. This one. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, we appreciate you guys hanging out, those of you that hung out with us tonight. Yeah, we appreciate that. We will be back Friday. As you guys all know, we'll be back Friday at 10 um, for the reunion. I don't exactly know what's about to happen, but I have a feeling that we're all going to need to come here and just work through it together, you know, oh, as a family. <laughs> going to be entertaining at least <laughs> at the bare minimum definitely entertaining um yeah so remember fall in love with you before you can fall in love with anyone else um i love you guys for watching make sure before you leave, share subscribe like, like share it's like this before you leave um make sure that you go ahead and head over to barn and lodge and support Cam cornelius and camille um like i said tomorrow we'll have their wedding video their um engagement video up that'll talk a little bit more about that. So you guys remember to go ahead and go over there and vote like this before you leave. And we will see you back right here on Friday. I will still be here in the most magical place on earth at Disney World, but I will be here on Friday at 10. So we love you and we'll see you guys on Friday. Bye. Mm -hmm.